Welcome to the video guys. You might remember back in June I pointed out the SNP wanting to bring in a universal basic income for every single working age Scot and people she considers Scottish that she has recently imported there. The sum involved was £11,000 per year per person and rightly this was ridiculed by almost everyone because it is the literal definition of lunacy. Well it seems they have not given up on that idea and instead have just lowered the amount that once again has been laughed off as ridiculous considering the SNP could never pay for it. Instead, it would be us mugs south of the border paying for the SNP's bribery of the Scottish people. Of course, the SNP don't care about that though, they expect England to pay for it as with everything else. Now, their universal basic income, which has dropped from £11,000 per person down to £6,000 per person, was reported the other day and as you can see here, was ridiculed like I said. But in recent times, that is not all the SNP have been up to, because following on from that, apparently last year the SNP's ruling National Committee passed a motion that allowed for all women shortlist that they had planned to use this time around in the upcoming Holyrood elections next year. This rule, it seemed, would have prevented a current male MSP from running in his seat that he had held for 10 years, which I have to say made me laugh because it almost caused a civil war within the SNP before it was scrapped, as we can see here in this article. Now, we won't bother going through that because my summing up of it is essentially all it says, but we will check out their latest embarrassment surrounding their push for independence and the SNP's constant economic lies in their bid to secure it. The Express article headlines Nicola Sturgeon humiliated, which is a common theme this year, it would actually seem. SNP's nonsensical economic case for independence dismantled as is everything they always say. Nicola Sturgeon has been dealt a crushing blow as experts have dismantled the economic case for Scottish independence in a stark warning to the SNP. Nicola Sturgeon's SNP have been buoyed by recent polling showing a surge in support for Scottish independence, with one survey putting those in favour of a break from the rest of the UK 8 points clear at 54%. The polling comes off the back of First Minister's pandemic response, which has been widely touted as a key factor in advancing her separatist cause, despite the fact that she has completely cocked it up and is just talking an utter load of shit to make herself look good, much the same as the Tories are doing down here. This is common practice for political parties, as we all know. It continues, the crisis has also exposed the deepest flaws in the economic case for an independent Scotland, according to leading economists. Now, maybe we should really just address the elephant in the room and the biggest flaw of their case for independence, and that is the fact they do not have a central bank and they do not have their own currency. And I will say something, if they actually gained independence, the British government could never let them use the British pound because they don't want to be British at the end of the day. They have no right to use it, they have no right to use our central bank and borrow against our currency, take a look at the utter shit show that they are, running it as it is, with only a few powers. Could you imagine this collection of shit weasels having the ability to borrow against the British pound and bring our currency down, which of course they would do, with uncontrolled spending that we know the SNP would go straight for, as we see in the articles we looked at earlier. Professor Jim Gallagher, a former secretary to the Commission on Scotland Devolution and a Better Together advisor, are argued that there was never an economic case for independence. The academic suggested the SNP were using spurious economic claims to justify their emotionally charged motivations to quit the UK, which of course their independence push is obviously to do with. It's not to do with common sense or anything like that, it is an emotional response to make themselves relevant. And let's be honest, we always need to remember that their idea of independence really isn't that, it is vassalage to the European Union. He went on to say, making the case for independence would be even more difficult for Miss Sturgeon's party today than it was in 2014. Speaking to the Daily Telegraph, he said, if there is another referendum, the 2014 line of argument making the rational case versus the emotional one is going to be even harder, but both still matter. And I tell you what, if they did get another independence referendum, the SNP's budget responsibility would absolutely be destroyed, as we will see in the coming months, I am sure. The article continues though, there was never an economic case for independence. There was an emotional case and some nonsense made up to make it sound economically good, which is all the SNP ever do. It is their number one skill at the end of the day. Angus Armstrong, Director of Rebuilding Macroeconomics at NIESR and former Head of Macroanalysis at the Treasury, 
Treasury put the dilemma facing the SNP down to public sector debt, and of course the fact that they do not have their own currency and the British government could never let them use ours, as I have said. Every unionist around this country will be screaming from the rooftops if the UK government did that, I would guarantee it. The Economist argued an independent Scotland would face a crushing debt burden which would spark devastating consequences for its currency options. He said the whole issue comes down to one thing, public sector debt. If the debt is divided by population, a newly independent Scotland would start life with a public debt burden over 100% of GDP, which would have consequences for its currency options. Yeah, it likely wouldn't have any. Mr Armstrong went on to question the credibility of a newly independent nation coming into being with bigger deficits than the rest of the UK. And of course, that is all thanks to the SNP's piss-poor management of Scotland, as we already know. The expert explained Miss Sturgeon would need to prove she is capable of running Scotland's fiscal affairs prudently before she is able to realise her separatist dream, which is something she is completely unable to do because of her socialist leanings, as we all know. He said an independent Scotland would start with bigger deficits than the rest of the UK, the same debt burden, and you want to use someone else's currency. Do you really think that is credible? Scotland can certainly be an independent country, but in order to do that, it needs to convince people it can run its fiscal accounts prudently, which we already know it really can't. Professor Graham Roy, director of the Fraser of Alanda Institute and former head of the First Minister's Policy Unit, issued another warning shot to the SNP. He said the party would need to set out a very clear plan on how they would manage the public finances once the higher debt burden and larger deficit is taken into account, which obviously they wouldn't be able to do without some extreme austerity, as we all know, and that really wouldn't help them in upcoming elections, that is for sure. We all know the SNP voter wants everything for free. At the end of the day, can you imagine when the government has got to start taking something back? They will all be screaming and shouting from the rooftops. Of the Scottish economy, he said, it has higher public expenditure than the rest of the UK and in the past that gap was made up by oil but if oil revenue is not there there is nothing to make up that gap so that's why the deficit is much bigger. And obviously, given the SNP's commitment to their green bullshit, the oil is completely out of use for them, I would think. Now, I've got to say, it's not been a good few weeks or a good few months for the SNP. They have been ridiculed by almost everyone north and south of the border, like I have said. And the few articles I've shown you here prove they are completely incompetent, lying to everyone, and absolutely delusional when it comes to almost everything. I would actually laugh, but I kind of feel sorry for the Scottish people having to deal with this incompetent fuck pig. But anyway, guys... Thanks for watching. Remember, the daily live stream has moved over to Twitch, so if you want to join me over there to chat in real time and have a laugh, the link will be down in the video description, along with the channel's other social media links. And on a quick note, I also want to pay thanks to our channel members. We passed the 100 member mark the other day, so a big thank you to them for all of the support, along with everyone else who likes, comments and shares my videos. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. And that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off.